teleconnection literally means connection at a distance. And in atmospheric science research, we use the term teleconnection to refer to wind patterns that connect different regions of the globe. For example, changes in the wind patterns over Hawaii are connected to changes in the winds over California, also the middle part of the country, and the southeast United States. We have known about El Nino and Southern Oscillation for at least 150 years. There were oceanographers, fishermen, who knew about this warm water current off the coast of Peru because it affected how much fish they were catching. And then we knew about the Southern Oscillation from some very nice work that Sir Gilbert Walker, who was a famous scientist in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and he was working in India and in Indonesia. And he described these changes in the trade wind patterns. But we have not known for such a long time that El Nino and Southern Oscillation were actually part of the same phenomenon. And that knowledge occurred from Jakob Björknes, a Norwegian scientist. El Nino really wasn't discussed much by atmospheric scientists until the 1970s, 1980s. Um, there was an El Nino in 1972-73 that kicked off some research, including here at NCAR. Uh, Michael Glantz was one of the first people to really look in depth at El Nino and its effects. But the one that really broke it open and put it in headlines was in 1982-83. Uh, that one brought very heavy rains to California, uh, drought in Indonesia, Australia, a lot of what we think of as, as classic El Nino effects. So that brought El Nino to the attention of a lot of people, especially in the research community, and a lot of study began to happen as to what causes El Nino and, and uh, how we can monitor it better. And those monitoring systems were then in place for the other huge El Nino, which was 1997-98, which is often called the El Nino of the century, the 20th century. And that one really put El Nino in the headlines, made it a household word. And again, a lot of the classic effects, um, uh, heavy rains and a lot of the Sun Belt, California, all the way over to Florida in many areas, uh, drought in Indonesia and Australia, severe drought. Um, so when the El Ninos are strong, you're more likely to get these classic intense effects. When they're weak, you may not get some of the effects at all. Uh, or they may be spotty, they may not last very long. So there is a little bit of a difference between the really strong events, which are more rare, and the more garden variety El Ninos.